Hi, I'm Diane Dayton. We're at the 20th annual VF Outlet Berks Jazz Fest in Reading, Pennsylvania. We are with Rob DeBoer and also with Tony Grace of 480 East. Thank Thanks, you for Diane. being with us. Thanks for wow. having us. Wow. So let's talk about how all of this started. Now, you guys met in a production capacity, right? No, actually, I was working with my brother in the early days, 1989-90. Uh, we were just doing a lot of sort of dance production, and mm -hmm. my brother was a DJ at, the t DJ at the time, so we were doing a lot of that sort of style of music. And uh, although I did play a lot of jazz when I was younger, in high school and such, and with various bands, and then I met Rob uh, in 91, and he came in uh, and started with the, helping us out with the production and the dance capacity, and we were doing a lot of records in the UK at the time. That's how we started. That's basically when Rob came on board, we were starting to release singles in England. So we were listening. Our ears were always sort of attuned to the UK scene. And, uh, and at that time, the early 90s, that's when Chardé was coming out. and All that sort of uh, Roddy Jordan, that whole Sounds of Blackness and Talking Loud and a real sort of soul revolution yeah, was happening. Rebirth of Cool and yeah. that, that stuff. Yeah. So that was influencing our sound. And, and at the time, we were doing a lot of dance, as I was saying, and pop production. And sort of as a release, you know, sort of off schedule, we would do more of a jazz influence thing. There was no plan behind it. And then our agent over in England was over for a Christmas visit one year, back in 96, I guess. And we had played, he said, what are you guys doing these days? So we played some of, the, some of that little session work we're doing. And one of which was East Side, that yeah. became our first single. We played uh -huh. a bunch of tracks for him. And he said, you guys should just put this into an album and, and put it out in England. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Which we did. And all this time, we had no idea that there was such a thing as smooth jazz in the, you know, down south of the border. We're up in Canada, right? So, right. Uh, so... You know, fast forward a year, and uh, you know the, the QCD in New York, East Side went number one on that station. And wow. I was like, "What's going on down there?" And yeah. that's America, we discovered smooth jazz. Yeah. Yeah. We discovered this whole market, and, and <laughs> sort of managed to find a home there, even though we never set out to do that. So yeah, you know, that's sort of how things got rolling. We thought, well, I guess we should do another record. And then, yeah. yeah, it was a real success. East Side was great. It was number three for the year in '98, and the album did very well. So it was just a logical thing. Maybe we should uh, do more of this. So, so we're, we're still doing it. Yeah, so, so yeah, come south of the border. Come yeah, see yeah, us. Yeah. yeah, that's great. Well, I know Noodle Soup was a great hit for you guys. Yeah, and the funny thing about that was Noodle Soup was actually the original version of Noodle Soup was one of those first you know twelve inch singles that we did that we mm -hmm. put out in England. You know, it didn't sell tons of copies, and but it was just a fun little track. And. Uh -huh. When we were finishing up the En Route record, I guess back in 07, we decided yeah. to, to resurrect Noodle Soup and you know, bring it into the, the new century. And yeah. yeah, that's right. Yeah. It is. That yeah. worked out pretty well. Sure did. Yeah. Let's just go way back. When did you start playing? How old were you? Mm -hmm. Yeah, way back, way back. Heart, Q yeah. heart. <laughs> was, uh, well, you started playing piano as a young lad. What's yeah, I was, uh, yeah, I was. Uh, my parents put me in piano lessons when I was four. Uh -huh. and that's, all I've ever done, really, so. Wow. What about you, uh, Well, I came from a big family of seven, which was noisy to start off with. And the idea of me taking the drums home was just, uh, you know, uh, was not going to happen. So I was lucky enough to have a friend when I was growing up in uh, grade eight and seven who had, uh, his par parents were very wealthy and they were always away traveling. So I was able to put my kit in his living room and he had a grand piano. It was great. And the two of us just played all the time whenever we had a spare moment. And that's when I got into it, and that led to playing in uh, high school bands and, uh, you know, doing the uh, stage band, which was the sort of mm -hmm. jazz offshoot of your concert band. Mm -hmm. And that's where I met a lot of the young players, and we, we started doing little bands together, little offshoots from there. And that's when I started, at the same time, listening to a lot of, you know, jazz fusion and that sort of world, uh, you know, blending the synthesizers and the live mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. sort of instruments together. And, you know, the, the Joe Zow and all sort of influence stuff, and that's what got me thinking about that direction and so okay. it was a natural sort of progression to go and do something like 480. So where did that name come from? <laughs> well, going back to Jeff, the, the guy in England who yeah. thought we should put that album, the yeah. first album together. That was the, we, we were at a studio for, for about, uh, I think 11 years yeah, we were at yeah. this location. It was at, it was at 480 Richmond Street East in Toronto. Okay. So and Jeff uh, had called saying, we need to put a name on this thing. He was sending a FedEx courier. Yeah. And we said, well, We've got all these tracks. What's the, what's the group what called? What are we calling what's ourselves? The, you know, <laughs> So we got rid of the Richmond and just 480 East. So okay. Pull it out of the hat and it's stuck. Yeah, there yeah. you go. There you go. What is it like performing for you guys? I know you oh, really gosh. enjoy it. What are, you, what are you thinking? What are you feeling on stage? Oh, it's, it's fun. I mean, it's, it, it's hard really to explain to people who don't perform, but it's, mm -hmm. you know, 
Yeah, there's yeah. a certain, like, in a show like yesterday, there's a certain amount of um, anticipation about, uh, you know, is something going to go wrong, you know? A well, lot especially of it, with, with the kinds of shows that we do, because really the, you know, 480 is just us, and wherever mm -hmm. we go, we'll pick up guys depending on where we're going. Mm -hmm. uh, and we've done some shows with Schiltz and Matt Marshak before, right. and we played with Calvin and John, the, yeah. the rhythm section, uh, a couple times before, but it's, it's always sort of a different configuration, mm -hmm. and we never have time to really rehearse, so it's, there's always kind of a, an, an unknown yeah, quality, yeah. quality going into the show. Yeah. But, uh, but once you get going, you know, yeah. then it's all right. We're going to be okay. It's all yeah, right. Find this <laughs> rhythm. That feels great. And yeah. when the crowd, like yesterday, the crowd was right into it, yeah. and, and everyone was just having a good time, and it's, yeah, it's just fun. Yeah. yeah. If you could define your sound, how would you define <laughs> it? I think the blurb in the, in the magazine here said, said something about chill funk. I haven't heard that one before. Does that work? Okay. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. It captures some of it, for mm -hmm. sure. Um, there's a lot of electronica influence, I guess. Um, I don't know. That's that's the, uh, it's the, the mystery perennial of question, right? Right. <laughs> and it keeps evolving and changing, that's doesn't true. it? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, we try not to to sort of have any preconceptions when we're going into a new record. Mm -hmm. you know, we'll just be. It's always sort of. We're always working on so many different things, and we'll always have sort of a, a lot of different song ideas or just groove ideas kicking around. Mm -hmm. and when it comes time to make a record, we just weed through them and sort of. Okay, well, this one sounds like it could be a 480 track, so we'll put it in this folder, and yeah. whatever ends up getting in there gets whittled down a little further, and you know, mm -hmm. it ends up being an album. But it's it's just you know, like I said, whatever sounds like a 480 track, so whatever that is. <laughs> yeah, and it's a pretty wide sort of description of the sound, so we don't try to pigeonhole it too much. If it's yeah. like Rob saying, if it, it has to it's groove. Kind of, yes. You know, it, most of the time has kind of a jazz edge to it, but not always. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So yeah. I know it's not yeah. a sound bite. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> there yeah. you go. Is there anything that you would like us to know about you that we don't know, that we should know? Well, mm -hmm. did you know you're from Toronto? Yes, from Canada, yeah, yes. From Canada. Yes. <laughs> um, what else? Um, we have children. Yes. We have no secrets. Well, then please do share. You, how I many have two boys, you? Uh, okay. nine and uh, 11, Ryan and Jack. Uh -huh. And Rob's got, got three young boys. Oh, ah, okay. No girls. Oh, well. Yeah. yeah. How old are they? Uh, my boys are 9 and 11, and Rob. So. I've got twins that are almost 11, uh -huh. and my youngest just turned 6 a couple of days ago. Any interest in music with the kids? My youngest is somewhat interested. Uh, they're both studying piano. Okay. But, uh, yeah. They love sports. I mean, you know, yeah. boys, right? They love so many things when they're that yeah. age. I can't get them to focus entirely. I'm trying to get them on their homework. That would be the most important thing. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I haven't, I haven't really pushed my kids to do anything. They're all musical, but I haven't, right. uh, yeah. you know, one of them kind of plays guitar, and yeah. the other one's taking piano for a yeah. while, and they, they sing in the choir at yeah. school. But, right. Yeah. You know, I, I don't know. One of them's going to be a writer, I'm pretty sure, because okay. that's all he does. Yeah. Well, we'll see what develops with them, <laughs> yeah. and we'll see as you evolve, too, with your sound, because I really do like what you do, whether it's chill funk or something in between and out and around that. <laughs> well, we are working on the next record right now, so oh, we'll good. see where that one goes. Okay, all right. They expand the definition of Great. Well, I look forward to hearing that. <laughs> okay. Thanks so much for taking time Thank today. You. Thanks for having us. We're coming to you from the 20th Annual VF Outlet Burke's Jazz Fest in Reading, Pennsylvania.